Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this incredible concert series. What, in, what great company I'm keeping, and wow, praise the Lord. I'm Honey Tree, and I've been here at the station many times. It's been too long since I've been here, but hey, Miss Norma, and God bless you. Uh, thank you for your vision and your husband's vision that made this television station possible. Hallelujah. It's great to be back. Um, I got saved in 1970. I was a hippie high school kid involved in drug abuse. And my mom was praying for me. And God, I, I was born and raised in Iowa, but I, my sister went to art school in Indiana. So I got on a bus during Easter break and went to visit my sister. At the art school, a revival had broken out. And there were born-again students who shared the gospel message with me, that God loves me and sent Jesus, his son, to die for my sins. And they encouraged me to ask Jesus to come into my heart, that if I would, uh, I would be saved. Not only that would I live forever, but Jesus would come and live in my heart. For as it says in Revelation, that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Amen. And so I asked Jesus to come into my life and I got saved. And it was so wonderful. And he became my best friend and told me he had a plan for me. 
And I just fell in love with the Lord. And after a couple of days of walking with the Lord, I realized, you know what? He doesn't want me to do drugs. And so I quit. Praise God. But the weird thing was I was so excited and happy that everybody thought I was stoned. <laughs> and so I had to write a song to explain what was going on. out on the street about nine o'clock kicking up my heels just taking a walk i was smiling a smile singing a song and swinging my arms just trucking along wasn't it a shame that i had to stop i was rudely interrupted by a mean old cop who said kid anybody as happy as you are has got to be loaded and I said, but officer, you can rattle me, shake me, smell my breath, and make me roll up both of my sleeves. Search me anywhere you please, but I'm clean. I got nothing to hide. I said, the reason I'm happy is because I got this spirit inside. And officer, did you know Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? And he said, oh, I'm sorry I bothered you. Move along. Well, I got back home about quarter to ten, and my mom said, honey, now where have you been? She said, I've been reading about this marijuana weed. Anybody as happy as you are has got to be doing something wrong. And I said, but mama, you can rattle me, shake me, smell my breath, and make me roll up both of my sleeves. Search me anywhere you please, but I'm clean. I got nothing to hide. I said, the reason I'm happy. about because I found out if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't need anything else. Hallelujah. And she said, oh no, we got a fanatic in the family. Well, the very next day I was off to school. Now by this time, I knew I had to play it cool. Well, I got to my class and I sat in my place. But I forgot all about that smile on my face. The teacher saw me grinning and she asked me what for. When I told her I was happy, she marched me out the door and straight to the principal's office. And he said, I'm sorry, but anybody as happy as you are has obviously been smoking in the boys' room. And I said, but sir, I'm a girl and you can rattle me, shake me, smell my breath and make me roll up both of my sleeves. Search me anywhere you please, but I'm clean. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. I got nothing to hide, paranoia, goodbye. I said the reason I'm happy is because I got the spirit inside. I'll sing it with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, this music is Jesus music. It comes out of the revival in the 1970s called the Jesus Movement when God had the crazy idea that hippies should get saved. It just shows that he has a sense of humor, you know. I mean, all of a sudden, all of these churches that were Bible-believing were invaded by creatures from outer space, basically, you know. 
And it was a test for the church to see if they could see Jesus in us and love us and, and kind of adopt us into the family, even though we were from another culture. And, uh, and they did. The, the church that I went to in Fort Wayne, Calvary Temple, Bishop Pano, they just loved on us young people. And God instructed them not to tell us what to wear, but just to love us. And the Holy Spirit told us what to wear. But he didn't care about that. It was like 20th on his list of to-dos, you know. And so uh, for a while, we were, we were looking pretty wild in church. But we loved the Bible, and we just wanted to, uh, to soak up the Word of God. And the Bible began making changes in our our life you know we got set free from drugs we started following the lord we witnessed everywhere all the time and uh many many people got saved and so it was a wonderful holy ghost revival that actually broke out all over the world and one of the things that happened was that some of the people who got saved were musicians like myself a folk musician my friends that started the Petra Rock Group, they came to know the Lord. Then there was, you know, Larry Norman and Second Chapter of Acts and Phil Kage and Randy Stonehill and all these wonderful musicians. And they started calling that Jesus music because it didn't sound religious. It wasn't the, from the traditional religious background. It was secular sounding-ish, but then it was radically sold out to Jesus Christ. And so... I felt like what the Lord was saying was, I don't need you to be religious. I want to have a relationship with you. I want you to be really know me and walk with me. And then if you do, you can just throw your head back and sing. And however it comes out, I will sanctify that. And that's what I think Jesus Music is. This is a wonderful example of Jesus Music written by Phil Kage. It's called... Uh, it's called Lovely Jesus. Lovely Jesus, I have so much to be thankful for. You have given life to me, and it's you I alone adore. Lovely Jesus.
so much. Amen. Well, what a privilege it is for me to realize that I'm a part of Jesus music. And uh, when I was just this, you know, girl from Indiana who had written some songs and was singing in a coffee house, my pastor encouraged me to make a record. So we went to Nashville and we cut this album and I had a thousand copies of it, you know, uh, selling them in my little coffee house concerts. But then the album got picked up by Word Music and they started di distributing it all over the world, and uh, they gave me the opportunity to make several more records in the 70s, and so I became part of the whole Jesus music phen phenomenon. And when I was thinking about the privilege of that, it inspired me to write a song called Pioneer, which I would like to sing for you. And I, I'm just thinking about how grateful I am to be a part of that group of people like such great writers as Annie Herring and uh, Andre Crouch and uh, Barry McGuire and Jamie Owens Collins and on and on. And so that's what inspired me to write this song. But when you listen to it, I just want you to think about how Jesus is calling you to be a pioneer. Pressing onward beyond your fear, only the Father goes before you to your own frontier. You're a pioneer, uncharted. Stay here. Only the fire. 
That song got written for Mike and Carol Bishop's wedding. I was part of the Adam's Apple Coffee House in Fort Wayne, and I sang it first for them, and and then it just got sung in lots and lots of weddings after that. Praise the Lord. And another time, as I started recording, of course, people invited me to come and sing, and I would fly to various churches and colleges and and I found myself a lot of the time in the airport waiting for my luggage. And as I was doing that one day, I noticed a handsome black man sitting on a bench. And he was looking down at his little daughter in a stroller. And she had her arms lifted up in the air, just kind of as if to say, pick me up. And, uh, but he was just kind of smiling and looking at her. And I felt the Lord say to me, that's the way I want our relationship to be. And so when I got to my hotel room and I put my luggage down and I just stuck my ans arms up in the air and started to sing this song. Like a little 
Now you know how it goes. Let's sing it again. Praise God. My mother has gone to be with the Lord, and I just kind of want to, after singing it, I thought I really want to dedicate, dedicate that song to her. She uh, loved it. And one time we were flying to England together, and it was my mother's first time to fly to overseas and to go to England. And she was just so excited about the trip. And as we were sitting in the airplane, she had on the headphones and she was listening to the 
music that was programmed at by the airline and all of a sudden she ripped off the earphones and said father lift me up and here they had they had father lift me up programmed in the airline music and my mom was just so blessed and here he was lifting us up over the ocean to go over to england and and be with some great friends at that time my dear friend liz doyle and her husband sid uh, pastored in ashford kent and they always invited me every year to go do concerts in england but now they've moved to the states but at, at one point they got invited to go to Pakistan and minister there. And they invited me and Tanya Reed, who's here with us tonight in the audience, to go along with them and the team. So we went in 2002. And uh, while we were there, we heard such interesting musical sounds because the Christian music over there sounds very Pakistani, as you can imagine. And it inspired me to try to write something that would be in that s sound. But I had to kind of come up with a new tuning because when they sing, they sometimes sing in major and then they switch to minor and it's all very you know, exciting and exotic sounding. So I needed something that sounded good with either major or minor. This song is uh, one of my very favorites because it's called The Man in White and it's about the phenomenon of Jesus appearing to people in their dreams. He's dressed as a man in white. He does something wonderful for them. Uh, for example, an Iranian lawyer testified that Jesus appeared as a man in white in her dream and defended her in court when she couldn't defend herself. And afterwards, she got saved because she had this experience. And he always says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so I wrote a song to try to tell that story, and here it is. It's called The Man in White.
Praise God. Well, there's another song in that same mode in my uh, CD that's called Call of the Harvest, and that's the title song. So I want you to learn uh, a little refrain with me. And if you guys could um, beef up the track in the monitor for me, I know I, I made you turn it down, but now I want a little bit more so they can sing along. It goes, harvest, harvest, great is the harvest. So let's practice that. Harvest, harvest, great is the harvest. Good. Now, if I do this, you keep singing because I'm going to do another part, but you just stick to your harvest, harvest, great is the harvest part. Then when I do this, you stop singing, and then your part's going to come back again. Now, I'm going to sing this one in English, and then I'm going to sing a little bit of the Urdu a version. That's the Pakistani language. And then I'm going to sing a little bit in Arabic because I just recently learned to sing it in Arabic. And so let's see if I don't get too confused, if I can manage to do all that. Okay, go ahead and roll the call, call of the harvest. Who hears the call of the harvest? The fields are white to the harvest. Who hears the call of the harvest? Who says, Lord, send me? is the Urdu. Basal ki kardai khabu lava Basal hai teyar lo go soon lo Basal ki kardai khabu lava Khan ke tehe me jang Here's your part. Harvest, harvest. Harvest, harvest. Great is the harvest. Harvest, harvest, keep going. The harvest is great, the laborers are few. The harvest is great, the laborers are few. Jesus is the seed of the harvest that fell to the ground. Send 
send me. Ready? Here we go. Harvest, harvest. Harvest, harvest. Great is the harvest. The harvest is great. The laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Send forth workers into the harvest. evening I was by myself washing the dishes feeling bored and I said Lord give me something to get through the dishes and so I started making up this song called Up to Something Good well we had um, Spanish speaking guests and they translated it to Spanish and took that song with them known as Yo Voy a Creer and they took it with them to their denomination and now it's a favorite all over Mexico and Central America just uh, a really exciting to be able to write something that crosses culture. So let's sing it together. You guys can do it in English with me. It's called Up to Something Good. I'm gonna be Take you. That is what you said. With fire and water, I will take you. That is what you said.
Amen. Well, that song is a paraphrase of Romans 8, 28, for we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. You may be going through something in your life that it's hard to understand, but we can believe according to God's word that he can take something bad that happens and make something wonderful out of it. Amen. So tonight, let's just lift a hand to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe that that's me, that you are going to do something good in my situation or in the life of the person that I have on my heart. I believe that you're up to something good. Even if I can't understand what's going on right now, I proclaim my faith in your word and in your faithfulness and in you, Jesus. Amen. I just want to say thank you tonight for allowing me to be a part of the Living Room Concert Series. Let's clap our hands and thank the Lord for this wonderful series. Appreciate Cornerstone TV and everybody here that's working hard to make this happen tonight. Um, and I just want to close with one of my favorite Jesus Movement songs of all time. This was written by Larry Norman, and it's called I Am a Servant. Bible tells us 
It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. That we're not saved by works, but by grace, through faith. And it's the blood of Jesus that's applied to us that cleans us up so that the Holy Spirit can come and live inside and give us the power to change. Amen. So tonight, I just want you to think about it. Ask Jesus to come in and be your personal Savior. He'll do that if you invite him. So let's close by singing this chorus together. Um.